Mindy, I want to take some calls now. We have our segment of Don't Be That Analyst, which is one of our first, and it's one of my favorite segments that we do. We just take some calls and people talk about what you shouldn't do as an analyst. And this is a fun segment. This is something like, okay, this really happened, but you really don't need to be doing it. And so our first caller is Marilyn. Marilyn, what is your Don't Be That Analyst? I would say don't be that analyst who marks up or alters in any way evidence documents. Make copies and work from them. You know, I've seen analysts do that and it kind of ruins the whole case. So don't be that analyst. And in her episode, she talked about financial analysis and it was some great advice and she has some great stories in that episode. Again, if it's something that's an original document, it's definitely something that you don't want to be writing on. Make a copy of that and then jot down, highlight whatever you want to do on the copy, not the original. You know what that reminds me of? I don't know if you remember reading about this, but it happened like years ago. A museum hired a painter to try to repurpose or repaint like a really old photo of Jesus or something. And mm -hmm. like they botched it and they botched the original and it just became like a meme for like a year or more. Oh. So it just reminded me of that, of like ruining the original is just the most awful thing. Like make a copy of it. Like don't mess with the original one because you don't have a backup. Like that can make or break a case. Like if you try to go to court and present like a botched up evidence. Yeah, that's not good at all. Now, I don't remember that particular story, but it reminds me of another story because one of your ilk, your millennials, was taking a selfie at a museum. I think it was a bunch of old pottery that was very, very expensive. And she was taking a selfie with one of them in the background and I think she tripped and fell backwards and it was like dominoes knocking down each exhibit after that. And she basically broke every single piece of pottery on there. That video went viral for a couple of years there. I can't, I can't remember how long ago that was. That seems like about maybe three or four years ago. I, I remember that too. And I was thinking, I'm like, is that fake? Like, <laughs> did she get set up? Like, why would they? And hopefully those are, I've heard of this. I'm not like a museum connoisseur or anything like that, but I've heard when museum put things on display, they're like replicas. They're not the original because of incidents like that, you know, <laughs> like yeah, clumsy like... people, people like not being careful around the art uh, work of art. So hopefully those were just replicas that were damaged and not I don't know. The I, original. Seem to, I seem to remember they that made major news that I think it was the real ones because it was a they made a really big deal about it, I remember. But anyway, let's move on. Next on the line is Deb. Deb, what's your don't be that analyst? Don't be that analyst that defines yourself and your tasks, you know, so narrowly that you put yourself into a box that is not a good contribution to anyone. I think that goes back to what we were saying about always learning. Don't have the mindset of that's not my job. I think that's what Deb was get, is getting at here is you don't want to just say that I, I only analyze this. I don't do anything else, but I only analyze burglaries or I only analyze homicides or I only analyze gangs. You don't want to pigeonhole yourself because there's always something to learn and you don't know when other disciplines, other people will influence your main goals. I think that's a really important message and the unfortunate thing, hopefully it doesn't happen to anyone <laughs> who's listening, but people are already going to pigeonhole you. Like, don't be one of those people that pigeonhole you as well, because officers, people not in law enforcement, they don't know what a crime analyst is. They think you're just a data monkey or something like that, or you are this and so forth. So they're already pigeonholing us. So don't, don't be one of the people who pigeonhole you as well. Don't be that analyst, <laughs> right? All right. Next on the line is Brian. What is your don't be that analyst? Don't be the analyst who thinks their job is to push buttons on software and get answers. That's a fascinating one when you think about it because of where the analyst is sometimes. You get into data management more than analysis. Because the data has so many issues, 
and you get so many requests for reports that you have to run manually. If you're going to start doing reports regularly, you want to automate them and you want to do it as quickly as possible. And I think a lot of analysts still get to the point where they have to still push a couple of buttons to get the stuff to kick off. I think that's where that runs into that if you're just a person distributing data, you're essentially a clerk and not an analyst. And there's a big difference between being a clerk and doing true analysis and understanding what the data means and, and studying it and coming up with recommendations and suggestions about what the data is telling you. So just keep that in mind that it's a necessary evil. I understand that you're not going to get past it, but that shouldn't be the majority of what an analyst does is just to push around data. Yeah, definitely. And just to add on to that is we should embrace technology and growth and progression. Like the technology is there to help us with our jobs. The technology is not there to replace us. So it shouldn't be as, you know, we always dream like, oh, if only there was a button you can just press and magic happens. Like, you no, know, like it can help us, like you said, automate some parts, but it can't replace us. Like an analytical mind an inquisitive mind, how we do our jobs, like our brains like cannot be replaced. Like technology can help us automate some steps and speed up some portions, but just a reminder out there that technology is here to help not to replace. So don't be too reliant on it, but also don't be put off by it. All right, next on the line is Debbie. Debbie, what is your don't be that analyst? Don't be that analyst who automatically does what he or she is asked to do. Interview the requester. Often you'll find they need something different than they thought they needed. And this is your opportunity to show them the art of the analytical possible. I like that, the art of analytical possible. That is fantastic. I think that's interesting that Nate Huber did talk about this last week is the idea of make sure you understand what the requester is asking of you because you don't want to create something that the requester doesn't want or may already know and that just is not a good situation for an analyst to be in so make sure you fully understand the question that needs to be answered yeah and i think it's important to do that up front while they're there as well because sometimes i i would imagine at least for me when i was a new analyst i was really timid and reserved i was like well i don't want to annoy them with all of my questions and they look like they're in a rush so i don't want to like keep them with like my million questions but over time, I found that it's less time consuming if I just find out what they want up front, because if they just give me something really brief and I only have like half of the story and I do it based on that half of the story, they're going to come back and be like, this isn't what I want. And then now you're going more back and forth and spending more time trying to remedy the situation when the answer to the problem could have been solved at the front end. And our last Caller is Brittany. Brittany, what is your don't be that analyst? Don't be that analyst that doesn't check your work. And especially if you're calling somebody with your sergeant sitting next to you, make sure you're not calling a porn line on speakerphone. <laughs> <laughs> that might take the cake in terms of the don't be that analyst. And that was a nice shout out to Brittany, our cake maker that was on our show. So yes, that I, I, I'm not sure I have much to add to that. I, I will say, yes, double check your work. But the idea of having a speakerphone on in a cubicle scenario, and it turns out to be a porn line, oh, I would just want to crawl and die underneath the table. Yeah, I, I, I don't even know what to add. <laughs> That's good advice. Yeah, we should take it to heart. <laughs> that's definitely a good advice. I tell you what, we'll actually use that for our words to the world as well. So yes, double check your work and don't call porn lines and have them on speakerphone at work. So that's the words to the world. <laughs> 